the Johnson Wax Program. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax products for home and industry present the Fibber McGee and Molly Show. Consisting of Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, B. Benaderet, Arthur Q. Bryan, and I'm Harlow Wilcox. Molly, we regret to say, being absent this week, a flu victim. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, and the music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. What's the most difficult part of your home to keep clean? Isn't it your kitchen floor? Every time you have it looking nice, somebody tracks it up or you spill something or the children bring in mud. But if you know the secret, it's really quite easy to have a kitchen floor that's clean and shining all the time. Just get some Johnson's Glow Coat, and in no time at all, you'll have a kitchen floor that fairly sparkles. There's no rubbing or buffing with Glow Coat. Just spread it around on the linoleum and let it dry. That's all there is to it. All you do is come back in 20 minutes to find your floor polished and gleaming, never streaked or uneven. Next time someone tracks in mud or you spill something, just wipe the floor with a damp cloth and it'll shine like new again. Apart from this handsome wax-polished beauty, you'll know, too, that your attractive linoleum is wax-protected by that tough film of glow coat so that it will retain its bright colors and pattern and newness far longer. Try it. Be sure to ask for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. When a man persists in walking through the snow and slush with no overshoes, when he goes out into the sub-zero morning to get the mail in his bathrobe, when he runs around his cold bedroom floor with bare feet, what inevitably happens? That's right, his wife gets the flu. <laughs> That's why the doctor is at 79 Wistful Vista, the home of Fibber McGee and Molly. How is she, Doc? Huh? How is she, Doc? Huh? Is she all right, Doc? Oh, is she... be quiet, you little fuss budget. Huh? Molly has a light case of flu, that's all. Oh. She has all the medicine she needs, and the balance of my prescription consists of at least 24 hours rest in bed. Okay, Doc, okay. I'll see that she gets it, and I'll make her some hot lemonade every half hour. I'll keep reminding her to take her medicine. I'll take that's her temperature... That's exactly what I was afraid of. Hmm? Leave the woman alone. Go away and hide. Lose yourself. Yeah, but what if she needs if something... If she needs anything, Mrs. Costas will see that she gets it. Harsty, is she coming over? Yes, she did a great deal of nursing during the war. And when I'm short of nurses, she helps me out. Oh. Incidentally, you don't look very well yourself. <laughs> Get your bay window caught in a waffle iron or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I ate something last night that didn't agree with me. What? Oh, just a little sandwich I fixed up about midnight. Fried egg, bologna, Bermuda onion, cream cheese, and mustard pickles. <laughs> oh, fine. Rigor mortis on rye bread. <laughs> no, 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 whole wheat. Uh-huh. Well, how did you sleep? Like a log. You don't say. Yep. Like a log was laying across my stomach. <laughs> my boy, you have interior arrangements that would make a 40-ton drill press look like it was made of sponge cake. In all my weary years of practicing medicine, I oh, never... Oh, 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 that must be Karsty now. Come in! Oh, hello, Mrs. Carstairs. Nice of you to come over. I'm very glad to help Mrs. McGee out, Doctor. And good evening, Mr. McGee. Hi, Carsty. I sure appreciate this. I hope it ain't interfering with any social engagement. Hey, hey, your fur coat's all rained on. Here, let me hang it up before it gets ruined. Rain won't hurt it, McGee. Of course not. To quote an old joke, did you ever see a mink carrying an umbrella? <laughs> uh, have you any instructions for me, Doctor, or any suggestions? Well, they're all written out on the hall table upstairs, Mrs. Carstairs. You know, the usual routine. Keep her warm and quiet and feed her lightly. Yeah, just let me know when you want something cooked up for her, Carsty, like... Milk toast or hot Look, coffee? Look, bird brain, I'm going to take you out of here. You're going downtown and have dinner with me. Yeah, but, Doc, suppose she needs me for something. The only I'm... thing she needs right now is a little less confusion. Confusion spelled M-C-G-double-E. <laughs> I shall prepare anything she wants, Mr. McGee. Just set your mind at rest. What, you mean you can cook, Karsty? My dear Mr. McGee, when I first met Mr. Carstairs, I was slinging hash in a... I mean, I was dietitian in a Greek restaurant. Uh, oh, 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 my goodness. I'd better take a look at my 
my patient. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Come on, McGee. Get your leggings and mittens on. We'll go downtown and kick a few calories around. Oh, gee, Doc, I don't think I ought to. I ought to stay here get in Get your case... coat and stop arguing, Noisy, or they'll find your body in a snowdrift strangled with a stethoscope. <laughs> okay, okay. Where'll we go? We might try that new place on Oak Street, Joe's Gravy Bowl. You ever eat there? No, but my office nurse told me she had. She like it? No, but she said she ate there under unfortunate circumstances. What unfortunate circumstances? She was hungry. <laughs> uh, come on, come on, come on, McGee. Quit stalling. I've got to have dinner and get back to the hospital so I can... Oh, for the love. Come in. Hello there, kids. Or... Hi, Doc. Where's daughter, Johnny? She's got the flu upstairs, old timer. And lower your voice about 40 decibels. You sound like the mating call of a sea lion. Uh, okay, fellas. Sorry to hear about the kid. Anything I can do? <laughs> No, thanks, old-timer. Not a thing. Hey, we're having dinner at Joe's Gravy Bowl. You know anything about it? Hey! Do you know anything about Joe's... Joe's Gravy Bowl, eh? I know one of the waitresses down there, Lily Dugan. Yeah. Fine girl. Maybe you've seen her in there. Tall, red-headed kid with half your coffee in the saucer. <laughs> we never ate there, old-timer. How's the food? Hey! I said... Not I... bad, Johnny. Not bad at all. <laughs> Ask for their T-bone steak smothered in mushrooms with sauce bordelaise. You don't get it, but it's fun to watch their face when you ask for it. <laughs> Would you care to join us for dinner, old-timer? We'll flip a coin, odd man, for the check. Sorry, Sawbones. I'd like to join you, but I got a date to go horseback riding with my girl, Bessie. Horseback riding? On a night like this? Hey! You mean to say you yep, go... Yeah, on the merry-go-round, down at the stadium. <laughs> yep, I got a dandy little mare down there, one with glass eye. Three gated. Up, down, and wobble. <laughs> This is our last time. Bessie's getting bow-legged. Did she say so? No, but the pleats in her skirt are beginning to open up. <laughs> I had a horse once that could talk, old-timer. Hey! He said he a had a horse... A horse, eh? <laughs> hey, that's wonderful, Johnny. What'd you do with him? I sold him. He was an Arabian horse, and nobody understood Arabian. <laughs> Pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. The oh, <laughs> way I heard it, one feller says, the other feller says, he says, I see where we might be able to travel to the moon one of these days. What do you mean, one of these days, says the other feller? My sister's already been there. No, says the first feller. Yep, says the other feller. Got a picture of her setting in it. Took it Coney Island. <laughs> well, I hope daughter feels better, Johnny. <laughs> Billy Mills and the orchestra, and I can't begin to tell. Move those fat little legs of yours, will you? It's starting to rain hard. 
Yeah, it's too bad they can't have a little of this rain out west where the soil is blowing away. Yeah, my gosh. Half an hour of this rain right now would do them more good in five minutes than a month of it would do in a week at any other time. Uh, how was that again, Pivot Tooth? <laughs> I says a half an hour of this rain would do them more... Oh, hey, there's La Trivia. Hi, La Trivia. Hello, McGee. Oh, good evening, Doctor. Evening, Mr. Mayor. Better step into this doorway out of the rain. Yeah. That's it. Let me in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mayor, I like to be present when you get over pneumonia, not while you acquire it. After a few years in the Coast Guard, Doctor, dry clothing seems a trifle effeminate. Uh, McGee, where's Molly? <laughs> she got bit by the flu bug, the trivia. I had to get Doc out of the house so she'd get well quicker. Uh-huh. <laughs> and little Gabby here is not what you might call a soothing influence to the ailing, Mr. Mayor. He was yammering around the house like a southern senator reading corset ads into the congressional record. <laughs> so I'm taking him to Joe's Gravy Bowl for dinner. You ever eat there, La Trivia? As a matter of fact, McGee, I just came from there. Uh, what'd you have to eat? Sand dabs. Sand dabs? Yes, that's fish with little dabs of sand in them. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's such a bad place to eat, why don't you go someplace else? Well, I eat there for old times' sake, McGee. I went to college with the owner. As a matter of fact, we both played in the school band. What did you play, Mr. Mayor? I played a tuba. Tuba what? It wasn't a tube of anything It was a musical instrument Well, that's pretty ingenious, La Trivia What'd you do, hold your finger over the end and squeeze it? <laughs> I knew a guy could play air hose at the filling station like it was a bagpipe you I'm afraid and... I didn't make myself clear, McGee I played the tuba Don't you know what a tuba is? That all depends on what it's a tuba Up, boy, Doc, get in there and pitch. I tell you, it was not a tube of anything. It was a tuba. T U B A. Tuba. <laughs> well, we're being a little silly, McGee. You know what a tibia is? That's the inner and larger bone of your leg. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, tubia. I used to play it. I did not say tibia. I said tuba. It's a wind instrument, as I'm sure everyone in the world but you two gentlemen knows. Wind instrument, eh? Uh, what'd you do, hollow out the bone, kind of like a primitive flute? Gee, that must have been quite... It a... was not a bone, I tell you. It was brass. Oh, now, you know better than that, Mr. Mayor. Nobody ever had a brass tibia. <laughs> I didn't say anybody had a brass tibia, a tubula, a brassica. <laughs> Listen, I said I played a tuba. But you didn't say a tuba what? Of course I didn't! <laughs> a tuba has, doesn't have to be a what or a tibula. I mean to say that a lind instrument, a instrument... A brass tibia. A tuba. Is, 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 is. It's a thing that... Every orchestra has a brass tibia. That was it. Tibia. Tibia. I... You... I... McGee. <laughs> Doctor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Do you like to play baseball? I love it, Latrivia. So do I, Mr. Mayor. Then I think I'll write a letter to Cleveland tomorrow. Hmm? I think you should both be given back to the Indians. <laughs> and I... Well, how was I, McGee? Oh, you were great, Doc. <laughs> Molly would have been proud of you. You better not overdo it with him, though. Huh? Not with his blood pressure. He'll blow up like a bubble dancer's balloon at a legion stag. <laughs> Hey, uh, is this the restaurant, McGee? Looks like it, Doc. Yeah, this is it. Mm, it's crowded, isn't it, huh? Yeah. That don't mean anything these days, Doc. Uh, these days, you could put a camp in a snake pit, and people would stand in line three deep to get a plate of French fried heartburn at three bucks a spasm. <laughs> hey, bud, how about a table for two? I'm sorry, sir. There was just a few moments wait. Did you have a reservation? No, we didn't. We couldn't find your name in the phone book. I know. I have an unlisted number, sir. Keeps out the riffraff. I'll see you very shortly. Well, not a bad-looking joint, is it? Clean, at least. Maybe they... Oh, look, McGee, there's Wilcox. Well, it can't be so bad if he eats here. Hi, Junior. Hello, pal. Hello, Doc. Where's Molly? Home of the flu, my boy. 
Getting egghead here out from underfoot was part of my prescription. <laughs> you just finished and eaten, Junior? What'd you order? Well, I ordered egg stuffed with caviar for an appetizer. Uh-huh. Then a cup of puree de mongol julienne, a mixed green salad with roquefort dressing, mm-hmm. baked mountain trout with almond sauce, a side order of French fried zucchini, baked Alaska, and a demi tasse. You got all that stuff? No, that's what I ordered. I got a club sandwich and a glass of milk. <laughs> How was the club sandwich? Great, great. I could even taste the clubs. <laughs> I think they'd been used by the Keystone cops. <laughs> I take it you haven't got a very high regard for this June Junior. Or Joint Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do the one about the Coast Guard now. <laughs> But what do you eat here for, Junior, if it's so bad? <laughs> Lower your voice, pal. The proprietor buys a lot of glow coat from me. Oh. Have you been out in the kitchen? No, we haven't, Junior. Is it pretty awful? No, it's awful pretty. Oh. Immaculate. <laughs> the linoleum shines like a mirror. You know how easily spilled things are wiped off a of Johnson's glow-coated linoleum. Oh, yes, I know how that is. Well, these people keep the place so clean that you could even operate out there, Doc. Well, if somebody will give me a knife and a pork chop, I'd like to operate in here. <laughs> the owner told me that even with the wear and tear on a busy restaurant, restaurant kitchen like this. The linoleum lasts a lot longer and looks infinitely better when he protects it with glow coat. Yes, but what... He says that with the help shortage and all, they can't spend all day scrubbing kitchen floors. Well, that's all... But with glow coat so easy to use and requiring no rubbing or buffing, it's a cinch. Yeah, you but... You just pour it out, spread it around, and in 20 minutes or less... Yeah, but what that got to do with... That's the... why I don't want you fellows to criticize too loudly. He's doing the best he can under difficulties. Oh, yeah. And personally, I'd rather eat bad cooking from a clean kitchen than fine food from a messy one. (laughs) Say, incidentally, what did you order? We haven't ordered anything yet, Waxy. (laughs) (laughs) So far, we've been given the brush like a couple of bad boys on Papa's knee. What do you recommend, son? I don't recommend anything, Doc. I was just going to say that if you try the Swiss steak, you'll understand why the Swiss are always neutral. That would take the fight out of anybody. (laughs) So long now. Let's go someplace else, Doc. Gee whiz, if they don't want to... I have a nice table for you now, gentlemen. Right this way, please. Will this table be satisfactory? It will be if you put something on it to eat. (laughs) This place is a little run down, ain't it, bud? No ketchup on the table. Your waitress will get you some if you wish, sir. Susie... Table 12. Here are the menus, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, tell me, what is the chef's specialty? Drinking lemon extract, sir. <laughs> but if you have any difficulty, please call me. Hmm. Well, seems to be a pretty good choice of stuff, Doc. Uh-huh. Country fried chicken looks good to me. It's scratched off my menu. Oh. How about the roast beef? Roast beef is scratched off my menu. <laughs> well, we might try the lobster thermidor. That's scratched off my menu. How about the turkey curry? That's off mine. <laughs> Lamb chops? Off mine. Liver and bacon? Off. Pork? Off. What else is there? The only thing left that ain't scratched off either one of our menus is this here uh, closed all day Monday. <laughs> I think I'll have that on whole wheat. Oh, well, they must have a few things. Okay, that... folks, I'm your waitress. What did you want? What do you got? I asked you first. Let's play fair. <laughs> My peristalsis has slowed up so much by now, it would take me five minutes to hiccup. (laughs) What's ready, Susie? The hard rolls is nice. (laughs) Look, sis, we didn't come all the way down here to dine off in hard rolls. How's the minute steak? Well named. The minute you eat it, you wish you hadn't. (laughs) We don't want to be fussy, Susie, but what can you recommend? Sir? I do not wish to seem unloyal to my employer, but there's a hamburger stand two blocks north oh, of here. Oh, that... come on, come on, sis. Surely you must have something fit to eat in here. What are all these other people eating? Well, let me see, mister. Those four men at the next table, they're gamblers. Mm-hmm. They're having the chicken croquettes. <laughs> How about the two ladies at the third table there? That's the boss's wife and his sister. They're having sliced ham and potato salad. Oh, that ain't much of a dish for a cold night like this, sis, but I'll have that. I'll ask them if they can spare you some. They brung theirs with them. (laughs) Look, uh, look, Susie, knowing what you know, and I'll bet it's plenty, what would you suggest we eat? Omelets. Okay, that'll do it. Two omelets. Okay, Doc? Okay. Two eggs or three eggs. Does it matter? Well, 
With three eggs, you got another 33 and a third chance to get a tired one. Why push your luck? <laughs> okay, okay. Two eggs in and lots of fried potatoes and ketchup. Coffee now or later? I'll have mine now. Me too. In here, we call that a suicide pact. Hmm? Okay, gents. Just write the names of your nearest relatives on the tablecloth and I'll take care of everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> And here are the King's Men to sing Personality. Mary Smith had a college education. Sally Jones had a scientific streak. Susie Lynn used to lecture on ancient architecture. Josie Green spoke Latin and Greek. Just forgotten girls with forgotten brains. While history explains... Papa door was on the ballroom floor, said all the gentlemen obviously. The madam has the cutest personality. And think of all the books about the berries looks, because it made her the toast of Paris. She had a well-developed personality. And what did Romeo see in Juliet? Or Piero in or Jupiter in Juno, you know. And when Salome danced and had the boys entranced, no doubt it must have been easy to see that she knew how to use her personality. What did Romeo see in Juliet? Or Piero in Piret? Or Jupiter in Juno? Salome danced and had the boys entranced. No doubt it must have been easy to see that she knew how to use her personality. How was your omelet, McGee? Not bad, Doc. What there was of it. That was a two-egg omelet, though. They must have used canary eggs. <laughs> Mine was a little skimpy, too. I tried to fill up on bread and butter. Wasn't enough butter. It wasn't enough anything. I never did get any water. Yeah, I saw you trying to get the waitress's attention. I've been beckoning to her for so long, I got a Charlie horse in my forefinger. <laughs> oh, oh, here she is, here she is. Did you want me, folks? Yes, give me the check, will you, please? Oh, it's my check, Doc. You suggested this for Molly's sake, so I'll pay. All right. <laughs> You, uh, you don't put up much of a fight, do you, Fessy? <laughs> On what I've had to eat, I couldn't Indian wrestle Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> How much is it, Susie? Four dollars and forty cents, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, it's been a distinct pleasure to have waited on you. Four forty? Did you hear that, Doc? Yes, I did. The tablecloth must be by Adrian. <laughs> and 40 cents for the privilege of sitting here with a bent fork, a dry water glass, and malnutrition. By George... Calm I... yourself, blowtorch. Oh. Calm yourself. Come on, pay that ransom note and let's get out of this turnip trap. <laughs> Let me check it again. Here. Hey, look at this, Doc. Look at what? What it says on the back of this check. If you have any criticisms or suggestions for the improvement of our food or service, please notify the manager. Uh -oh. oh, boy, hang on to your hat, Doc. Here we go. Hey, manager, manager, come here a minute. Well, as the man said when they found an elephant in his stateroom, I brought this on myself. <laughs> yes, sir, did you wish to speak to me? Indeed I did, Buster. I have a few criticisms and suggestions I'd like to offer as for your request on the dinner check. That's very kind of you, sir. What are they? In the first place, why don't you give your patrons a glass of water now and then? What did you do before you ran a restaurant? Heard camels? You're quite right to complain, sir. I realize that the help we have now is inadequate. And as long as you're running a restaurant, did it ever occur to you to get some food in the joint? I know our supplies are inadequate, sir, but if you only know the trouble we have getting meat and butter... Oh, leave the man alone, Moose Jaw. It isn't entirely his fault. He asked for suggestions, and he's going to get suggestions. Oh. Look, Buster, look at this steak knife. You not only haven't got steaks, but if you had, you couldn't cut the gravy with this thing. I know, sir, I know. I agree with you completely. And another thing. Do you thing. mind if I smoke while you burn? <laughs> no, go ahead, Doc. 
And another thing, Buster, the service. I never waited so long to get waited on in my life. You come uh, in here... Excuse me, sir. Were you ever in the restaurant business? No, I wasn't. Well, you are now, sir. Huh? I'm a lot sick of it than you are. Huh? If you've only been here two, two hours and I've been here two months, I, I, I'm giving the place to you. Hey, now, wait a minute, bud. I didn't mean that. Uh, attention, please. Patrons of Joe's Gravy Bowl. No, 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 no. This establishment has just been changed. Your new proprietor is Mr... Uh, what's your name, sir? Patsy McGee. Your new proprietor, Mr. Patsy McGee. No. Thank you and goodbye forever. <laughs> well, now that you're the owner, McGee, I have a few suggestions to make you... Oh, oh, oh grab a sugar bowl, McGee. Here they come. What the... Oh, how did... Uh, who's the... Look here, mister. I found a nail in my spade. Can you call this library paste mashed potatoes, brother? I've got a good note. Oh, now, here. just a minute, folks. I, I want to go up to war. Hey, where's the Wilson Rabbit? Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, A poet once wrote, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. Well, since that was written over a hundred years ago, obviously the poet wasn't thinking of Johnson's wax because it wasn't even made then. But it occurred to me how well those words do apply to this wonderful wax. Certainly, with their lovely luster and gleaming polish, waxed floors, furniture, and woodwork are things of beauty. A joy to you and your family and everyone who sees them. And with every application of Johnson's wax, their loveliness does increase. In addition to all this extra shining beauty, Johnson waxed surfaces are easier to keep clean, too. Dust and dirt don't cling readily to their satin smoothness, so you save yourself lots of work. And because a coating of Johnson's wax provides protection, you save the lovely things in your home from undue wear and tear. If you haven't a can of genuine Johnson's wax in your home, why not put it on your shopping list right now? Ladies and gentlemen, between Pearl Harbor and VJ Day, there were more than 355,000 people killed, one and a quarter million permanently disabled, and nearly 35 million injured. On the battlefronts? No. Right here at home. By accident. That's a pretty shameful figure when you realize that from 50 to 90 percent of them were due to sheer carelessness. So during these days of worn tires, faulty brakes, and general readjustment... Be extra careful. Take a little more time. Take a little more care. Take a lot fewer lives. Thank you, and I'm sure Molly will be back with us next week. Good night. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.